Hello, everyone, and I will discuss in this talk a general approach in optimization under uncertainty, which could be applicable in various areas of science and engineering. For different decision makers and in different applications, uncertainty in the random variable X may mean different things. For example, one decision maker may wonder how non-constant the random variable X is. In this case, non-constancy of X can be measured by a deviation measure, like standard deviation or mean absolute deviation. Another decision maker, for example, in regression analysis, may be concerned about non-zeroness of X, which can be measured by some error measure, such as L2 norm. Yet in portfolio analysis, the question of interest is how risky a random variable X uh, that represents, say, portfolio rate of return is. In this case, risk can be captured in the form of either risk or regret measure. In fact, there is a unifying framework of error, risk, deviation, and regret measures developed by Rockefeller et al. All such measures are positively homogeneous convex functionals, and they differ just in some aspects on how they treat random variables. For example, a deviation measure is insensitive to uh, adding a constant to a random variable, and the risk measure of a constant is the same constant just with a negative sign. For simplicity, let's consider the following optimization problem. In many applications, decision variables and random parameters come together in the form of a single random variable X. <clears throat> For example, in regression analysis, the random variable X is the error of approximation of a dependent random variable by a linear combination of independent random variables. In this case, the independent and dependent random variables are random parameters and regression coefficients are decision variables. In portfolio theory, the random variable X is a portfolio rate of return, which is the sum of products of assets rates of return and portfolio weights. In this case, assets rates of return are random parameters and portfolio weights are decision variables. Often, there are several constraints which determine the feasible set for decision variables. For example, uh, portfolio weights should sum up into one, and if short positions are not allowed, the portfolio weights should be in a negative. In general, we can just consider that decision variables belong to some feasible set, capital X, which typically assume to be convex. The central element in any optimization problem is its objective function, which in this case is a functional f defined on a space of random variables and which captures the aspect of uncertainty appropriate for a given application. For example, the, the functional f is an error measure in regression analysis uh, and is a risk or deviation measure in portfolio theory. In general, the functional f could be defined axiomatically to conform to principles of rational decision making. For example, the diversification principle implies that f should be convex with respect to random variable x. However, if there is a whole class of functionals that satisfies given axioms, which one, which one to choose then? One of possible answers is to use inverse optimization, which works as follows. Suppose there is a solution or design X star, which is known to be sufficiently good from either the past experience or from a similar problem, a similar case. For example, an investor may have either previous or existing portfolio of financial assets that he or she is relatively satisfied with. Then the inverse optimization problem is to find a functional F star such that the original optimization problem with this functional yields the optimal solution X star. So this is the outline of one of the approaches in optimization under uncertainty and the rest of the talk just it will exemplify this approach in portfolio theory where deviation measures are used as objective functions. The modern portfolio theory uses variance or equivalent to standard deviation as a measure of portfolio risk. In fact, standard deviation is a fundamental notion in statistics and possesses many useful properties such as insensitivity to constant shift, positive homogeneity, convexity, and non-negativity. However, despite these attractive properties and a wide range of applications, it treats losses and gains equally and provides no customization in expressing decision makers' risk preferences. But is standard deviation the only measure that 
possesses the above four properties? Fortunately, the answer is no. Um, if those properties, namely insensitivity to constant shift, positive homogeneity, convexity, and non-negativity are stated as axioms, they define a whole class of functionals called general deviation measures, which include standard deviation as a particular case, but in contrast to standard deviation are not necessarily symmetric with respect to ups and downs of random variables. The class of general deviation measures also includes standard lower and standard upper semi-deviations, mean absolute deviation, and conditional value at risk deviation, or simply CVAR deviation. In particular, CVAR deviation has the following meaning. Suppose this is the probability density function of some random variable x. Here, Ex is the expect value of x, and Q of s is the quantile function of x. Then CVAR deviation for a given level alpha, which is in between 0 and 1, is the distance between the expected value of x and the average of the tail corresponding to the alpha quantile. So this difference is exactly the geometric meaning of CVAR deviation. In fact, CVAR deviation can be used as a building block uh, for constructing more sophisticated deviation measures. For example, a linear combination of CVAR deviations with different alpha levels is called mixed CVAR deviation, where lambdas are regarded as a discrete risk profile. Or we can integrate CVAR deviation with some weighting function lambda of alpha, which in this case is referred to as continuous risk profile and can be linked to a dual utility function. Yet another level of sophistication is to consider some collection uh, capital lambda of possible continuous risk profiles and to define a deviation measure as the worst case of mixed CVAR deviations over that collection of profiles. The above three deviation measures provide powerful capabilities for modeling individual's risk preferences. This is one of the main reasons for introducing general deviation measures. Now, let's discuss portfolio optimization. Suppose there is a risk-free asset with the rate of return R0, and there are n risky assets with rates of return R1, R2, and so on, Rn. Let x0, x1, and so on, xn be proportions of the initial capital invested into the risk-free asset and into n risky assets respectively. In this case, x0, x1, and so on, xn are called portfolio weights, and the portfolio rate of return, which is the random variable x, is just the sum uh, of um, S rates of return and portfolio weights. Then the portfolio optimization problem is a generalization of the well-known Markowitz mean variance model. Here, an investor minimizes a general deviation measure D in place of the standard deviation. Then uh, the feasible set X is determined by the budget constraint, which says that portfolio weights should sum up into one, and by the constraint on the desired expected rate of return. If short positions are not allowed, then in addition, x1, x2, and so on, xn should be negative. Now, the central question is, what deviation measure D to use in this portfolio optimization problem? The main assumption is in answering this question is that investors' risk preferences are consistent with the axiomatic framework of general deviation measures. If this assumption holds, then in this case, investors' deviation measure can be represented in the form of mixed CVAR deviation with unknown lambdas. Suppose the investor knows a portfolio X star that he or she is relatively satisfied with. Then the inverse portfolio optimization problem is to find lambdas in the mixed CVAR deviation such that the original portfolio optimization problem with this mixed CVAR deviation yields the optimal portfolio X star. The likely issue is that the portfolio X star could be sufficiently good, but not in fact a true optimal portfolio. That means that the inverse portfolio optimization problem may have no solution. What could be done in this case is to solve an extended inverse portfolio optimization problem which finds lambdas and a true optimal portfolio x hat 
such that X hat can be uh, is better than X star in terms of the unknown deviation measure. In the case of a discrete probability space, this problem can be reduced to linear programming. In fact, there is no need to check whether given X star is a true optimal portfolio, because if it is, then X hat either coincides with X star or has the same values of the deviation measure and the average rate of return so that this extended inverse portfolio optimization problem can be solved in the first place. So I would like to conclude this talk with the following list of relevant works. Thank you very much for attention and I will be glad to answer any questions. Hi, Michael, thanks very much. Let me go to the question that is uh, submitted. Uh, thanks for an interesting talk. Are there practical applications where a continuous risk profile would be preferable or more useful than a discrete risk profile? Uh, this question is uh, from uh, Brandon in the lab. Uh, uh, exactly. Well, actually, uh, it depends on the nature, uh, on nature of application. Uh, I would say that from practical perspective, it's much easier to deal with a discrete risk profile because of the computational complexity. Uh, but uh, even in portfolio optimization, even in that application, still continuous risk profile could be probably more preferable because it provides the whole spectrum. For example, if we consider this CVR deviation alpha ranges between zero and one. So essentially, we deal with uh, this dual utility function, if you wish, which in general, well, which should be continuous. Again, uh, it's convenient to discretize just from the computational perspective. Okay, Michael, just uh, a semi-serious question. And it's very exciting work. And uh, so I just wonder uh, the optimization approach, right, uh, that is being developed now by Yale, uh, how has it changed from the age of limited limited data now to the age of uh, big data? Uh, to the age of what? Limited data, say decades ago, now to big data. Okay, okay. Um, um, the optimization approach for- Well, uh, actually, uh, as far uh, my from my perspective, actually big data allows you to learn. Now we can learn offline, for example, uh, given that uh, sufficient data, we can train our model for, uh, well, given different designs, uh, uh, like not just X star, but could be different designs to learn from, from the past. That's exactly where the data comes handy. Uh, so we can use those, uh, that past experience to incorporate into the optimization problem and to find that risk profile, for example, in, in a mixed CVR deviation or in a coherent risk measure. So, or we can even use it in online regime when we can feed data gradually and develop an algorithm which would learn those, uh, those preferences and that's deviation or risk measure or error measure uh, in online regime. So that's exactly again where data can help, either offline or online learning of those risk preferences. Okay, got it. Thanks very much.